Amen. I thank God for the great eternal life church ministries. We send greetings from such. But our prophet is very spoken and spoken right. But I, I'm just gonna I'm gonna stay in the vein because we could not, amen, facilitate a revival if God ain't got the preachers with one accord. Come on, somebody. Amen. And so and so we're here today to talk about renewing of the mind and reviving of the spirit. And the scripture that comes that our prophetess, the Lord, had given her, amen, Acts 2 and 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. I'll read verse 2 and 3 and 4. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And they appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire and it sat upon each of them. Verse 4, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost yeah. and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Yeah. I just want to hit verse 1 and verse 2 real quickly, amen, before I take my seat. And the Bible said, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with, they, they were all with one accord in one place. All right. Acts chapter 1, the disciples asked Jesus, Jesus, when should you restore Israel? Uh-huh. And Jesus begins to tell them, it's not for you to know the time or the seasons That's right. of that which the Father has put in his hand. I come to let you know that you may not understand everything, but understand God has a time and a season for what it is that he is preparing for you. See, the disciples wanted to hurry up and get Israel restored because they had their Messiah, so they were ready to move. But there were some things in between the promise and its manifestation that needed to take place. And I want you to understand that the Bible said when Pentecost fully came, 50 days after the crucifixion, for 40 of those days, he showed himself in resurrected form to prepare his disciples for what was to come and then told them to wait until the power from on high had to come. Church, I want to let you understand some of the things that God has got prepared for you, it's coming if you just wait on him. Don't try to run out of the process prematurely because a lot of times we're looking to be delivered from the situation but not being renewed in the spirit, praise God. I don't want to prematurely come out of something and then I end up going right back in because all I did was shout and run around but all I got was a good exercise in church but then by Tuesday I'm defeated all over again. I don't say nothing in here. I need to make sure that God has given me something that's perpetual. Something that has lasting effect beyond the two hours that church offers. Boy, I wish I had some help here. And so when the day of Pentecost fully come, he could not sit it before. There are some things that God wants to give you in his time and in his season. And the Bible said when it was fully come, they, they were all with one accord. They were all with one accord. You got to start looking at who your days are. The Bible said 120 of them was in the upper room. They all were with one accord. In the Greek, their accord means homophibos. Homo meaning one, not homosexuality. Let me make it plain here. Homophibos. Homo meaning one, thymos meaning passion. They all had the same passion. In your next season, you got to understand who am I running with that has the same passion as me? I need to change some of my people in the upper room. Y'all ain't still- some of us may not have the right people in our upper room. That's why the Holy Ghost can't fall in your situation the way it needs. Because you got folk in your circle that's praying for things when they should be praying for more God. Are you running with folk in your clique? That has a thirst and hunger after righteousness. Or is everybody looking for a husband? Or is everybody in your crew looking for a new car? I wish I could get some help from here. Amen. I need to make sure that those that are in my upper room with me are with one accord. They are like mine with me. Because we got to understand, as I said, the very was saying, we see what's happening in the world today. And the church is so divided more than it's ever been before. We all have different synopses and we come away with different perspectives of what we see. But we know that the devil is raging and he's a roaring lion seeing who he can devour. But church, we got to get with one mind. Oh, praise God today. We've got to get with one accord. And God is saying, when I get my passion lined up with his will. Then I have to get into one place. Because sometimes I can have a renewed mind, but I'm still in the wrong place. I, I, I have not yet moved 
out of where God has told me it's time to go. And a lot of times we are bound by things and people, fears, uh, things of the past that has incapacitated our ability to trust God for the next level. But you have to understand that now that I am with one mind in the spirit and my passion is of God, I got to now be able to move into a new place. And a new place with a new mind means I've transitioned and transformed. Praise God today. Amen. And the Bible said that as they were in the upper room, they were one spine with one accord in one place, like much like what we're here tonight. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. See, you got to understand that in this season for some of us, God is sending a new sound. If you got an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying to you. See, the problem is we're trying to listen to old stuff but acquiring new things. It doesn't work that way. You got to be able to understand that God is a progressive God. And the Bible says as the sound came in to the room, it came in as a rushing mighty wind. God is getting ready to hit your front door with the kind of power that you won't be able to comprehend. It's about to shake your foundation. It's about to shake the things that you've been connected to, the things that you have been accompanied with. The Bible is letting us know that when it comes in, it's not coming in lightly. It's not coming in with subtlety. But it's coming in with a degree of power because so much stuff has been built up in what we've been in. So we've been doing good church but having poor living. Still making the same mistakes. Still picking the same old jokers as boyfriends. I wish I could get some help here. Still picking the same old jobs and can't seem to get out of the rut that we're so dark so I gotta send something powerful now. I'm coming to break your mold. I'm coming to break your tradition. I'm coming to break what you've been in so that a new sound will begin to come and fall on your ears. And then as it came in, the Bible said it filled the house. It filled the whole house. See, when God comes in, let me talk about being revived now. When God comes in, he's not coming in just to take over a few rooms. He's not coming in just to rent a little bit of space. He's coming to take over the whole house. Amen. He's coming in to take over your whole situation. Amen. I told the church this morning, I said that when you go to a restaurant, and what happens is that when the when the waiter or the waitress still sees the menu, you holding your menu, still going through the selections, they understand that you're not ready to order yet. So what they'll do, they'll stay back in the cuts until you put your menu down. The longer your menu is up, it's the indication that you're not ready to order. But once the menu goes down, now the waiter or waitress comes over and begins to proceed and commences to asking you what it is that you order. God is saying, I'm waiting for some folk to put their agenda down. I'm waiting for some folk to let me know when they're ready to order. I ain't saying nothing here. God is saying, I need somebody to put down what they've been doing and let them know that if they need Jesus, how many of y'all are ready now? down your menu so that Jesus can come to your house and say what will you have for me to do oh come on I need somebody to give God a praise right there I need somebody to give God a praise thank you Jesus thank you Jesus because the reality is church and I'm going to take my seat and believe it or not and my church will tell you I don't know how long to chase the shout I'm not about the emotionalism believe it or not I'm not about it. Trust me. I'm not about it. I'm about my, my, my church will tell you. I'm not about that. I'm about making sure that people know how to live to the fullness. He said, I come to give you life and that more money. Not to come to give you church and that more money. I come to give you life. That's why the world is doing what it's doing. Because we are so inclusive in our corners. And we're so caught up in our little church vernacular. And if people don't look like us or talk like us or do what we do as church folk, then we tend to and we tend to exclude them and alienate them. But I want you to understand that it's time now that when I have been revived, I got to not live in the revival. Our pastor, our prophetess did not allow, God did not allow her to get this and put this in her.
my spirit for us to just hoop and holler and have a good time. Right. Although yeah. that's all great and bad, because I will shout anybody out. I don't care, I'll shout. I don't care. I'll put on a dance in a minute because I love to dance. I was in the world, the Vera. I partied until it was the last. I was at, the janitors were sweeping up around me. Y'all ain't saying nothing. The DJ done left the building and I'm still dancing. Music still in my head because I love the party. I love the dance. But like the old folks say, I changed partners after a while. Praise God today. Now I'm dancing in the church giving God the glory. I don't dance as much as I used to, but I can still put a step down. But I understand that that the just shall not live by its shout, but the just shall live by faith. And so I got to have faith to walk out of here today. So I challenge everyone, what these speakers are speaking on tonight, and what you heard, and what you have received in your spirit, take it with you. See if you can now translate the joy that you have in here. And see if it's only either but for a moment, or can you allow it to have momentum? Because I need to make sure that God is living in my life. I've got joy at home. I've got joy at the job. I've got joy in my relationship. Praise God today. Sometimes we look for so much new word, we ain't even digest the old word we got. Come on, come on. We all, I need a word from the Lord. I need a word. Just see, ooh, I can feel the word. But what you do with last week's word? Come on, somebody. What the last week's word? Last week's word. Now, all of a sudden, you need a new word. Now the pastor got to sit and labor for God because the people need something fresh. Welcome to the whole word. Y'all ain't saying nothing here. The word from last week. Bible study from two nights ago. Y'all ain't saying nothing here. Amen. We need to get to a place where we can digest. And be able to live on what God has given us. I ain't knocking next week's word. But I want to get some victory on this week's word. Come on, somebody. I want to be able to live and have some joy. At least by Wednesday, y'all ain't saying nothing here. Been in church all day. Some of us be in church all day Sunday. 15 services. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I tell my children, we don't church like that. Come on, son. We don't, we don't do it now to church. Come on. No, no, no. Live your victory at home. You get the word. Now go home and live for Jesus. Come on. Until the next appointed time when we meet again. 99 said, so I'm tired. I got to go watch the game. Y'all ain't saying nothing here. I told all preachers, when the football season starts, that's it. There's a new move in the spirit. From September, that's it. I don't take engagement from September to January. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Because I got to enjoy life. Y'all ain't saying nothing here. And then I ain't any less anointing. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I don't need 44 church services to be anointed. Come on, church. I don't need 99 church services. I don't need 14 different tongues. All I need is to walk by faith and trust that God will do it. And there'll be victory in my life. Now, I just want to say one thing, prophetess, when you were talking about us being in one team like a football stadium. I root for the Dallas Cowboys. Thank God for your sister. When there's two or three. Come on. One can chase a thousand. You get that side, I get that side. Go ahead, girl. That's it. Make sure you get the good side. So you're a cowboy fan. <laughs> Listen here, because we can laugh and still be annoying. Y'all ain't saying nothing here. Oh, come on, somebody. Because you know everybody like to be all super deep in church with their anointed face. Get outside and cuss somebody good. <laughs> Let somebody come in them shoes. Let anybody threaten them red bottoms. You won't cuss them. But you're anointed self. I'm going to still laugh and preach the word and give God the glory. And still keep preaching Jesus to the unsaved. And let the unsaved world know that we need Jesus. That they need Jesus. Because it ain't about who you can keep in your church. It's about who you can reach. Come on, somebody. Who can you reach? I'm getting ready to close. Say this last point. You talked about the football team. When you go to a football stadium, depending upon who is on the same team. That's right. You'll hear the most noise. You got some folk that'll cheer for the Falcons. You got some 49er fans in the building. You got some New York Giant fans in the building. Some Dallas Cowboys, as it's been stated. But I am convinced that in this stadium, we are all cheering for.